In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This morning, the church hears of the law of love, and love incarnate, that is, of the Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the gospel reading for today, we hear of one of the Pharisees who was a supposed expert in the Old Testament law. And he comes to Jesus with a question, a question designed to put our Lord to the test. He says, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? It was a question meant to make our Lord look bad, to trap him, to catch him, perhaps in a mistake. Well, our Lord answers him with his very own word from the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said on these two commandments depend all the law, and the prophets. Love. Love, Jesus tells us, is a summary of the law. And not just a half-hearted, sorta, kinda love, but a genuine love, a constant love. A holy love so thorough and so complete that your heart, your soul, and your mind exude it at all times in every circumstance. It does so toward God and it also does so toward your neighbor. The lawyer himself who asked the question should have been convicted in hearing the Lord's answer. There was absolutely no loving intent in the question of the lawyer. Rather, it was a question that was motivated by meanness, by spite, by showmanship, by wicked cleverness. But who has that kind of love? That genuine kind of love, that constant and holy love, that love that springs from a pure heart and soul and mind. Well, the lawyer didn't. But it is also true that neither does anyone in humanity according to their depraved, that is their wicked nature. We have God's word on it, for he says in Genesis chapter 8 that the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. And St. Paul describes the Pharisees and those who are like him when he said in the ninth chapter of Romans, Israel who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that very law. Why, St. Paul asks, well, because they did not pursue it by faith, but as if it were based on works. The question for us this morning might go like this. Do you have that kind of love? You've been born anew from above in holy baptism. And we've seen the beauty of that gift this morning in Raphael. And you also, having received that very gift at one point in your life, 
And yet you who are baptized must also confess that sin is crouching at your door. The psalmist says, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? And in another place in the Psalms, it is, it is written, no one living is righteous before you. And also the Apostle Paul, who himself was baptized, the very preacher of the word of God, talks about his struggle with his sin when he said, for I know that nothing good dwells in me. That is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is good and right, but I don't have the ability to carry it out. The truth is that you do know this love. And like St. Paul, you desire to love. You desire to love because you know and you believe in Jesus Christ, who is love incarnate. And since you have been given in and through holy baptism and the ongoing hearing of the word that you have been given, this gift from God called faith, faith that trusts in the Christ. And wherever that faith is, there will be absolutely necessarily Godly love. But you cannot love God and your neighbors as you ought to. Consider your life according to the various vocations in which God has given to you. Are you a father or a mother or a son or a daughter? Are you a neighbor to someone, anyone? Are you a member of a congregation, a member of Faith Lutheran Church? These are your brothers and sisters here around you. Now think of God's holy Ten Commandments. Walk through them in your mind. And ask, how have you lived toward those whom God has given to you as your neighbors in light of those holy commands. Have you at times been motivated by meanness, spite, showmanship, or wicked cleverness toward your neighbor? Is it always true of you that people say, wow, there's no doubt that person is a Christian? See how that one is devoted to God and worship and prayer and always a godly life. Look how that one always loves his or her family, even their enemies. Look how each one of them in that congregation love one another. Dear baptized, as St. Paul says, you are to be those who are sanctified, that is, made holy in Christ Jesus. That God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, and therefore you do bear the name of saint, not lacking in any spiritual gift. But we must be honest that what is true before God, we often do not live before men. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the word of the Lord. Circumcise the foreskin of your hearts and do not be stubborn. Who then, who has that kind of love? Well, Jesus does. That's who.
Jesus does not return. The mean, spiteful, showy, and wicked lawyer, evil for evil. Did you notice that in the text? Rather than doing that, he gives him a good and honest answer. And then Jesus does even more. He asks the question of questions. He asks the question that should be every man's central, foremost, and most sought after question. He said, what do you think about the Christ Whose son is he? And when all of the Pharisees could not answer him, he pressed a little further. He said, well, if he is the son of David, how is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Jesus said, if then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And again, no one was able to give him an answer. And why were they not able to answer him? Well, because Jesus had touched on the very core of the Christian faith. It's the answer to who is the Christ. Interestingly, these who were supposed to be experts in the Bible didn't know the divine author because he stood there right before them. What are you to think about the Christ. You and I know the Christ to be true God, who also became flesh. Flesh just as his ancestor David did. We know that no king calls his offspring Lord, unless, of course, the king's offspring is actually the Lord. And that's exactly who Jesus was. Jesus is David's son, and Jesus remains David's Lord. For Jesus was born of the lineage of King David, just as it had been promised, and just as it had been foretold. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God. This one is the one who executes justice for the fatherless and also for the widow. He always loves the sojourner, giving him clothing and food. And David's Lord, and also your Lord. He bears the name Jesus. Why? For he will save his people from their sin. This is the one who has saved you. This is the one who has redeemed you from your sin. For as it is written, greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And you, you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are those friends of Christ. Jesus, we can say then, is love incarnate. Jesus loved his father and he has loved you with all his heart, with all his soul, with all of his mind. And how can you be sure about that? How can you be sure that Christ's love is for you? Look to his cross. Believe your baptismal promises. And trust his own testament. When he says given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
Amen.